welcome back to TNN's coverage of the world's nine best fantasy football players league. I'm your host, and this is what we have for you this week. It was another nice off week for TNN, and the entire team is, of course, very happy to be back. With that being said, Commissioner Tooch has passed along a message for me to relay to the league. He is kindly requesting that Brett, Will, Vanek, and Joe all pay their $50 buy-in ASAP. And now, here is Danny Football with his picks for Week 7. Hey, what's up, guys? The world's nine best fantasy football players expert, Danny Football here, back with another week of expert predictions. Last time we were on, I did pretty well for myself, going 4-2, and two, bringing my total on the year up to a very nice 17-7. and seven. My guest, Jacob, went 6-0, and oh, unfortunately, beating the experts and being the third guest ever to have a perfect week picking, securing himself a spot back here in the playoffs. But now... It's a new week, there's a new guest, and a new chance to beat the expert. So guest, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, I'm, I'm Grayson, um, owner and chief executive of the Texarkana Bandits, uh, and, uh, and currently looking for work, if anyone. <laughs> uh, no, you know, <laughs> that's me. Excited to be here. Yeah, Grayson, it's always great to have you on. Uh, you know, it's always great to hear the Bandit's perspective on the show. It's a Friday. We're having fun. Well, this will come out on Sunday, but, you know, right now it's Friday. Doesn't matter. I'll be doing the same thing. All right. First up, we have too many conks taking on Worthy of Love. Conks favored at 72%. Both of these teams have started off two and four, and... I think that's been a big shock for too many conks. I know they had really high hopes. Joe is still looking to right the ship, and they've just had absolutely terrible luck with the injuries this year. But even with that being said, I think they can stand up against this Worthy of Love team. This is a team that is starting Andy Dalton and the corpse of DeAndre Hopkins this week. The only bright spot for this team is... I guess that they now somehow own the wide receiver one in Cleveland in Jerry Judy. Um, I feel like I've kind of been beating a dead horse on worthy of love this year, always just knocking him down saying that the team's not good. So I'm just going to get straight to the point and say that I'm taking too many conks in this one. Uh, That's, that's good. Um, My notes I wrote down was uh, I will conk out on the couch for this one and fall asleep. I have not had time to shit on uh, Tom's team, so I'll do that now. Uh, the worthy of love uh, I had in my notes. Uh, Tom, if you really love this team, take it behind the barn, read it a nice story, and shoot it in the head because your team is terrible. Uh, how can you be projected 144 points? Like that's yeah. that's that's really bad. Um, it's time to liquidate and and go all in for Bunchy. If there's any value, if there's anyone you can trade on this team, trade them for pennies and just because you're not going anywhere and the team's aging. Uh, I went through all the player matchups. Mm-hmm. Just out of curiosity, Tom only is favored in three player matchups. Okay. Of, that's that's more than expected. Them. So that's more that's than not expected. Bad. Yeah, but it's it's tough. I think it's like flex number six. Tom's got yeah. a, a slight advantage. Uh and I'm putting this one on official ugly alert. I, I think we could see, uh, you know, close to a 100-point win here. Um, wow. And I'm, I'm going comps. All right, next up, we have the Judon Noodles taking on Team Big Chungus 22. Who do you like in this matchup? You know, a lot of people are going to look at the 0-6 number and say, oh, the Chung guy, they're terrible. Will doesn't care. He doesn't watch the show. Is our roster uh, is not actively managed. He hasn't looked at my trade request that I sent three weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not focusing on that number. I'm focusing on the fact that Will, uh, the chum guy, have the most points against. Yeah. So teams have just gotten up to play him. It really is not indicative of, of how good they are. 
And they've actually only scored two less points than the Judah Noodles this season. Mm, that's good analysis. That's good, yeah. And I don't think the Noodle Arms have it in them. Uh, so I, I'm going upset pick. I'm going Chung Guy. I think the big three, Tyreek, Mike Evans, and Demario and Luigi Douglas, they all pop off. And you've heard it here first. Don't be surprised if Leonard Fournette makes some noise this week. Mm, okay. Like I don't, you know, he might get a megaphone. I don't know what he's doing at his house, but he's going to make some noise. Uh, give me the Chung Guy. Big pick. Add the sound effect. It's a huge upset. Yeah, I like that pick. That That is uh, a very bold take on this one. I, I know last time we were on, I just absolutely ripped the noodles to shreds. And, you know, to their credit, they did come out and put up the seventh highest score in league history after that. Some are saying that it took the expert to motivate them. Uh, but that motivation really only lasted for one week because they put up. Hold on. What is this? The producers in my ear. It was 157 points. Last week, for the Noodles, uh, this team... Tom numbers. D- some might even say worse than Tom's numbers. Check out the scores last week. Not looking great for the Noodles. But this team is really just kind of directionless. They seem to be really erratic in their play and in their decision-making. I, I just I do not like what's going on in the Noodles' front office. I think they really made some big blunders uh not a great direction for this team but luckily they are going up against team big chung is 22 currently winless as you mentioned and you know i would like to give you some props here it wasn't my notes that there's only three points of difference between these two teams over six weeks of the season a half point on average every week so this matchup i think is going to be a lot closer and people probably think just looking at the records. With that being said, though, I am going to give the very slight edge to the noodles in this one. As a fan of this league, I'm going to beg Will to please sell some of his players after he drops to 0-7. And I'm, I'm going with the noodles in this one. <laughs> Next up, we have Hammond Throw taking on the SWAT team. SWAT favorite here. Uh, I know that Hammond Throw is likely coming into this one looking for that big statement win, trying to stop their slide. And this is one of those really old one-sided rivalries in the league. Hammond Throw somehow always deludes themselves into thinking that they can compete with the top teams in this league, even though they're currently sitting here at two and four. Uh, if they drop to two and five, I think it may be time for panic for them maybe time to sell maybe a little too early but i think if they fall to two and five there's going to be some questions raised about the management of this team for swat uh they, they've actually had some pretty promising developments with some other younger guys like tank bigsby chase brown uh so you know everyone says this team is just old this is their contention window there, there's some real up-and-comers on the swat team that you know maybe pushing the dynasty window a little bit a little bit further open, which I know is a very scary thought for the league. Nick Chubb's coming back this week, even if he's at like half strength. I think that's a great positive for this team. These are two teams I think are just on completely different levels, and this is a pretty easy pick. I'm going to go with the SWAT team in this one. I I, I like that pick. I uh, you know I think Visconti's due for some wins soon. Um, mm-hmm because he's he's slipping away from fifth place and we know that's where he's going to end up so but i don't think this week is it i mean this is a this is a mountain west team trying to play sec football it's just yeah. he's just not built for it all right that's they're built I'm different in the sec the, the worst team in the sec would still be better than the leader of the pack four so you know some are saying the conference should just disband already <laughs> It's, uh, you know, they're playing their own little games over there. And, and in the SEC, we're playing real football. So uh, give me SWAT team in this one. Uh, no real analysis needed. Just just a better team rolling through. Next up, we have the Tex Arcana Bandits taking on Jesus Christ. It's Jay Sanborn. Bandits favorite in this one. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Yeah, uh, call me Jewish, uh, because I do not believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, It's Jay Sanborn this week. Uh, 
You know, only one of these teams has Trayvon Walker. All right. That's true. And he's averaging 20 points per game over the last two weeks after he put up 39 in week six or week five. And then he put up less last week, but still great numbers, great average. Uh, and he's popping. He is popping off the page. Um, personally, you know, as a, as a Bandits fan, I'm a little bit worried of, uh, of what Quentin Johnson could do to us, mm-hmm. the, the star mm-hmm. player of uh, Jesus Christ, it's Jay Sanborn. But I think we're going to I think we're going to be able to overcome uh, Q's best effort. So uh, give me the Bandits. Give me the train. Let's keep rolling. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a good pick. This, this is one I actually don't have too much to say about. Fans of the show will know that I'm high on the bandits. I have been on this train for years now. This is this is now year five of me being on the bandits train. And it looks like it's starting to finally pay off. This team is looking pretty strong this year. They've had a couple missteps along the way, but I expect a little them to injured, be bright. A little injured, but it's fine. Good. You know, Trayvon puts the team on his back. If you've not been watching the tape on this guy, I pause this video right now it's it's sunday right before the game you need to go watch the all 22 trayvon walker just please watch the tape this guy has been putting the bandits on his back for years now and really just you know trying to prove himself ever since uh people were questioning the draft pick I know people people were people were questioning it uh but i've i've heard from many sources he's probably going to put up more points than aiden hutchinson for the rest of the season all i'm saying is oh trayvon walker's legs the right they pick. still work they still work um for for jesus christ it's jay sanborn that uh, this this is a team that does not inspire a lot of confidence especially with dj moore who's one of their few really good uh contending assets on a buy this week They've got a couple pieces for the future, but unfortunately for them, the future is not now. I'm still on the train. I'm never getting off, and I'm going to go with the Bandits to pick up a win in this one. Moving on, we have Team M. Vanek taking on Blood, Sweat, and Beers. Uh, Team M. Vanek currently favored. They're favored. This They're, one. Favored. They're, they're favored. This one I uh, could actually be kind of important down the stretch. Both of these teams are currently in playoff contention somehow, and a win could go a very long way for both of these franchises. For Blood, Sweat, and Beers, I think I've made it very clear where I think this team should stand, and they just continue to confuse me every single week. They go out there and have these great performances or get these really scrappy wins. Uh I don't know. I don't think this team should really be trying to win right now, but here we are, and this is unfortunately a big matchup for them. For Team Vanek, they obviously, as we had mentioned before, just lost Aiden Hutchinson for the season, which is a huge blow for this team because he is truly one of those players that can make a big difference on a fantasy roster. I'd put it as like TJ Watt, Nick Bosa. No, sorry. Trayvon Walker, TJ Watt, yeah, yeah, Bosa, maybe Aiden Hutchinson, but it's still, you know, there's not many guys up in that tier, and yeah. it's a big hit for Team M Vanek. Whenever I look at Team M Vanek's starting roster, it it just like it raises my blood pressure to think of them losing somebody because there's just nobody on their bench at all who could be considered a viable starter. Luckily for them, all of their guys are still healthy, aside from Aiden Hutchinson. No injury concerns yet, and I think they're going to keep chugging along and pick up a win against Blood, Sweat, and Beers in this one. I like that pick. I like that pick. You know, I, th- I think underrated is uh, Blood, Sweat, and Beers team chemistry. Uh, mm. Did you know there's currently six players uh, who are on IR in solidarity with Tua? <laughs> None you really got to respect that. A lot yes, of support from the locker play. room. Exactly. He's a leader, and they they follow him where he goes. 
But I, for this one, I'm going to be picking uh, Team Imbanic at the Disco, and uh, it really boils down to the fact that his roster reads like a uh, Russian uh, secret agent sleeper cell uh, code, and I love it. He's got Love, London, Reed, Dell, Cook, Laundry, Dean, Rap, Sermon, Orange, Sunshine. Uh, <laughs> And I just, honestly, that's all the analysis I needed is that every single member of his team is ins and a noun. Um, and that's big. That's big for chemistry. That's the kind of expert analysis you get here on TNN. That's good. Finally, we have our marquee matchup of the week. Undefeated, never lost, taking on the mental brick walls. Brick walls, favorite in this one. Who do you like here? I think what's important here is uh, undefeated, never lost, mentally weak and critically not good Mm -hmm. so i'm picking the brick walls i think i think they keep rolling um i'm impressed with uh with what they're doing and their little smiley face helmets um i uh yeah i didn't think i didn't think the brick walls would be here but i i think it's legitimately a good team despite you know trevor lawrence probably not the best qb to lead them but besides that good roster um yeah not not a lot here. Kind of a weak marquee matchup, if you ask me. I uh, I think I think this one gets away from them, and brick walls run away with it. Yeah, I I think that's a good pick here. As you mentioned, not a great marquee matchup. Uh, really slim pickings this week. There there's only if the season ended today, there's only two matchups where both the teams going against each other would be in the playoffs. This is one of them. And I think this may be the first time that Undefeated Never Lost is in the marquee matchup of the week in a way that is not completely ironic. So props to them. The franchise is trending up. And, you know, they are in a place where they're 3-3 three and three right now. This is a team that's always trying to turn the corner, trying to position themselves for the playoffs. And... This is the kind of matchup that you have to win if you want to show that you can be a true contender in this league. This is a franchise that wants to be taken seriously. They have the chance to go up against a team that is truly undefeated, has not lost this year. And we'll see if they can uh, show up and show out in the lights of the marquee matchup. For the Brick Walls, they, they've come out hot. I think at 6-0, and they're pretty much guaranteed knock on wood i think they're pretty much guaranteed a playoff spot right now and i i really would love for this team to go out and make some kind of move to really solidify themselves as a contender trying to compete with at least what i in my professional opinion see as the top two teams in this league both in the sec and the swat team and the bandits i think People are looking at those two teams, maybe the brick walls. I think the brick walls could use a little bit a little bit of a boost to get up into that true top tier, make themselves a championship contender. And, you know, I said before, undefeated never lost. They want to prove that they're a serious team. And luckily for the brick walls, they're not a serious team. Uh, <laughs> undefeated never lost is, in fact, deeply unserious. And... I, I'd just like to point all of our viewers to their starting lineup this week in which they're starting Bub Means and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. That's all you need to know for this matchup. Uh, the Brick Walls, pretty easily in this one. I'd be surprised where, if Undefeated never lost. But... Where did the picks go? Every time I look at this roster, I just remember how many picks they have at every draft. Miguel's always wheeling and dealing, so who knows always. where the picks have gone. I believe they've actually made a few trades with the Brick Walls team, so. You got 17 first-rounders, and you're, you're starting above means? <laughs> and Clyde edwards Lair, former first-round yeah. pick. Don't, don't sleep on him. Yeah, Deshaun, really, really top, really close to playing for this team. I hate that. Well, Grayson, oh. thank you so much for being on this week. I'm wishing you all the best of luck with your picks. Of course, not as good as me. Can't beat the expert, but it's great to have you on. Uh, great to have your expert analysis. And I, I look forward to seeing you back here on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'll, I'll be back for the playoffs um, at least once, probably several weeks. Um, and then, yeah, I'll be there for the trophy ceremony as well. So, um, you know, it's not the last you're seeing me this season.
No, no other notes, uh, nothing to plug except for, you know, the bandits were ready to get back on track. You know, we started hot this season, took a couple weeks off, went on vacation. Baker, Baker's popping off this week and uh, we're back. And thank you, Danny Football and guest Grayson for those great picks. That's all we have for you this time. Be sure to tune in next week to see how things shook out. I'm your host, and this has been TNN. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell.